UFA, but I doubt it is. That's what it reminds me of. Nice day out. Nice soft mud. It's like sweet. I'll dig here and then it gets down. Uh, it gets down a foot and it uh, starts to turn into hard pack clay. And it's like, well, maybe not. One of them had dug a burrow. Started to dig a burrow like that in one of these old, uh, I guess, fresh uh, four wheeler, four wheeler tracks. Hard to say what they are. I was here in a bald eagle earlier. That was a couple hours ago. So what do you call it? Something and something. Got the cinder block done. It's kind of a crazy you know finally being done with it so a good way to do work is to not do work uh, most people got a built-in desire to be productive not eight hours a day productive but you know after a day or two of doing nothing, people get antsy and they want to do something. Uh, for me, a few hours a day of doing something feeds that need to be productive. So the water level is still going down. This is where the bullfrog was, the big railroad timber. So I got my nice deep footprint right there. Went across here just fine, and then I get to there, and it's like, oh, maybe not. Yeah, a few hours a day, a few days a week. That's a good amount of work. Keep it in mind, this is like my vacation right here. Nice little prolonged working vacation. Eventually, oh, look at this. The tracks cross over over here. I don't see my footprints. Maybe this is them. Nice and some rocky bits. Always safe to be on the rocky bits. <laughs> they're driving their thing, they do a donut, and they're coming through, and then bam, it gets stuck. You can kind of see how deep that is. And then they get out to uh, try to unstuck it. You can see their footprints. And that may not look like much, but those are probably 14 inch deep footprints, you know, 20 inch deep rut. And they're probably doing this at night time. Get a lot of, I guess this is really fun to do at night. Four wheelering, nice big school of fishy fish, little baby fish. That is just a ton. And they've been streaming out of this little pocket for a long time. It's like they're all just trapped inside this thing. Hundreds of them, all because of all the gnats.
thousand at least little baby minnows and they've just been streaming out like this flow like that for the last 30 seconds and it's like there's no stop they just keep going and going and going there's all these little flies they must be feeding on those flies Seems a little crazy, but beautiful. Those flies are breaking down the mud into little bits and pieces that other things can use. You know, they're fulfilling a purpose. If it weren't for the flies and all the other nasty things like flies, it would be a we'd be actually covered in nastiness, you know? This would just be piles of dead things. They wouldn't be rotting or anything, but it would just be death, you know? Because you got the, you know, like, dead plants, you know? Thousands of years worth of dead plants, and dead animals, and dead bugs, just layers of it, you know? They'd be just walking in the squishy, squishy thing, you know? And you maybe hit a soft spot, you know? And then you're just up to your neck in dead stuff. That's what it would be like. But we got the flies and the bacteria and the molds and all that nasty stuff. So instead of walking on all that death, you're walking on life, you know? Breaks down, transforms that death into new life. It's kind of a beauty. Yeah, soldier fly larva. I go on about soldier fly larva and nasty things so much just because they're so useful and beneficial and they make the world such a great place. But they have such a bad rap just because of the function that they do. You know, the function that they play and how they look, you know. But, you know, it's a dirty job. Someone's got to do it, you know, and they're actually doing it, you know not gonna be all pretty and have a nice fur when you're breaking down poops and stuff. Bunch of sweet gum seeds. Sweet gum seed pod. Sycamore seed pod. Big snail. And then we get these little balls of green algae just kind of move along like that. The odd water beetle here and there. Uh, yeah, so still hasn't started raining yet. 95 today. This is October 1st. Uh, 95 degrees. Uh, it feels like heat index of low 100s. 100 to 103 or so. What it feels like, I don't know what it actually is. Had one good rain in August, which was uh, two and a half inches. Because of that rain, I was able to finish doing my concrete without any delay. Uh, I'm down to probably about that's what I want. That's 
a little swarm of baby catfish. They're moving too fast. I don't know what kind of fish that was. That wasn't a catfish. About the same size, it was actually on the surface of the water. It jumped out of the water, it was kind of flying along the surface of the water, kind of like flying fish, before it went back down into the water. And a bunch of little baby minnows. That's those catfish. It's just like all rippled because of all the That was a little minnow that was against, kind of on the surface. Flying on the surface. Yeah, so... I wanna... find some baby... fish and raise them. Uh, but not this year, it's too late in the year. Looks like a timber rattler or something. It's got a inverted tail that's stuck inside of itself. Kind of like maybe it's a rattle in there. You'd think it would be a water moccasin being down here. Yeah, it looks like a rattler's. Yeah, so, uh, something and something. Finished. A cinder block. Uh, I got the, uh, put the stuff on order yesterday for the roof. Their delivery truck. Broken down right now. Or was broken down. So they're backlogged on delivery. It's Tuesday today and the delivery will be Saturday. So I got however many days that is. Four days I think. Still hasn't started to rise yet the water level. Still going down and down and down. Had that two and a half inch rain in August and then had like a quarter inch of rain in September. So it's kind of a really no rain in two months. Grassy knoll. There's a ramp that goes up the grassy knoll uh, that way. Who knows what it does over there? So I went around that way. 
way. Uh, dropped the bag off at the grassy knoll. And I continued around uh, uh, that bend, I think. I think that's the bend right there. I'm back in that, that's like a little side bay. Back in there. This is the railroad tracks. Yeah, so I definitely want to get in some hikings while the water's low. Something from a video game. Again, an alien uh, lair. Something you'd find. I don't know what it is. Air pockets and some algae, or maybe some egg sacs. It's slimy and solid. Gelatinous. Kind of a jelly, solid jelly. Kind of see how it's clear. Could be like a freshwater coral or something. I mean, you'd think it's some kind of an egg sac. I'm not seeing any eggs. It's very mucilaginous. Coating that stick, it's not on that stick. Kind of like a scoby. Symbiotic community of bacteria and yeasts. Kind of what it felt like. And that colony of bacteria and yeast on the Colony of bacteria and yeast on the thing. On the stick. Oh, whoops. Yeah, I gotta. Can't look at the monitor on this thing. Unless I trip over rocks and such. And it's hard to. See what's going on around me. I'm looking through this monitor, looking at the LCD display. So I end up zooming in for something. I'm forgetting. Yeah, it's hard to say how normal this is. Uh, Last year, it was one month of dry weather where it didn't rain. This year, it's two months. And I'm assuming it's going to start raining here pretty soon, but I've been assuming that for the last three weeks now or something. Just, I'm always thinking it's about to change, but still hasn't changed yet, the weather. But, since construction on the main project is halted pending a shipments and uh, the weather could change you never know and water levels start to rise definitely a good time to Walk around the shoreline. Yeah, so ideally, I'll find a 
over time. It's kind of fancy. Sugar-free peppermints. Mm, doesn't smell like peppermint. It smells like mud. You wouldn't think fishermen would have fancy, fancy, uh, fancy breath mints like that. Probably pretty fancy. I can hear a four-wheeler over there. I can't see it yet. Four-wheeler must be in the trees. Somewhere's in the trees back there. Man, the four-wheeler guy doing some donuts when we come back. Or never mind. Won't be a coming back. This is a one way trip right here. Uh, so, this little bay area right here. Nice little mud beach. This is where I stopped my pawpaw video. I was walking through there, you know, there's some nice pawpaws back up in there. Thousand foot long pawpaw patch. Didn't have the battery to go any further on that trip. I don't know, somewhere's like around in there. When I wrapped up the thing, yeah, I kind of see the uh, train bridge bay right there. Anyone think it? But that's a big island, real tall island, small circle island, but tall. Yeah, the battery was too dead at the time, so I stopped shooting right here. And I started going around. But, uh, yeah, I did that off camera. Let's see if I can make it. Wow, I'm actually making it. I didn't think I'd make it across that so easily. I just kind of floated right on the surface. Uh, in this video, I want to take the shoreline all the way around to the campground mud flats. So, I don't know if I can, but Brought some water with me. Dry roasted salted peanuts. Salt is enough for some salt and water for some uh, hydration. Hydrations and electrolytes for me. And uh, got a little bit of backup battery. See how it goes. It would be nice to connect up the two main areas. Yeah, so I 
these big gray ones. Uh, should be beech trees. Just really old beech trees. Let's see if we can find some. These are the beech nuts right here. These little uh, spiky things. Kind of like a three-sided hard uh, milkweed pod. Inside a nice three-sided seed. Triangular seed. These are edible. Apparently some decent oils in there. Are edible. Probably the inner bark. Inner bark and roots are usually edible on trees. And like decently, decent amount of energy in them. But it's uh, too much chewing and it's a uh, rough fiber to digest, so you end up pooping it out like it's a bean, but it ends up being just a mat of fibers that you're pooping out. I guess it kind of looks like you're pooping out hair. I haven't tried it yet. But you can just boil that stuff. Uh, make a tea out of it and you get that nutrition out of the fibers into the water which you can drink. Because really you just want the nutrition. And then I guess if you're hungry and you just want to fill up the belly and you don't mind having a furry poop, you can uh, eat the fibers. A little bit of fiber is good, but a lot. <laughs> but uh, I like those nuts. They come out, they're decent sized nuts. The beech nuts. Beautiful looking trees. That smooth bark and the elegant branches and roots. And then that seed, it just opens up on itself. It's a decent sized seed and it just pops open on its own. Don't gotta do any cracking or anything. It's just kind of uh, takes care of itself. So a lot better than like a what do you call it? Acorn or something where you gotta smash the shell. Or like a hazelnut. Hazelnuts taste real good. Uh, kind of tastes like a peanut if you roast them and then unroasted. Kind of just a mild nutty flavor. Uh, like a roasted, dry roasted peanut. A raw peanut is nasty. Like a raw uncooked peanut. So it's so bitter. Like an acorn, you know? You gotta like roast it to make it edible. It tastes good. Stone Age people love the hazelnuts and things. So easy to use. It's a nice big railroad spike. Wow. Big. What is that? Got a hole. Looks like a massive bolt. Here's the head of the bolt. And there's the nut right there at the end of the boat. Go. Nice little view. Coming up now. 
Uh, so, ideally, find uh, spots for harvesting particular things. Go this way. Of course, the Kamars. Spots where particular things are abundant. And uh, harvest those things from those areas. And uh, go from there. So that's probably about 10 foot up, right there, 10 foot. Bank. That guy's getting ready to fall, but it looks like for some reason he's gonna fall that way. And this way. Kind of uh, in the high water season. Let's get go through the waters. And that becomes a little island. Well, there really is, you know. Apparently, one teaspoon of soil has like four billion uh, microorganisms in it. There's that billion with a B. So, I mean, even just a tiny little bit of something that's has all kinds of cool stuff going on in it. Nothing cool that's readily visible to the eye. This is a cypress. Get a good view of its root structure. Cypress has some funky roots. It creates these little buttresses. Those roots. You kind of see how it's just bracing, you know. Braces itself. Trunk flares out these massive ribs and the roots do these big buttresses so it can sit in this muddy stuff and not get blown over one point or another and there were other trees out here you know but they all got blown over and I looked into it and these are uh, uh, Galls, kind of like the oak gall, but this is made from a midge, which is like a, I don't know what a midge is, it's kind of like a, a, a mosquito slash fly, but it's its own thing. There should be a, you know, a midge larva inside of it. This tree's got a lot of them, They're everywhere. And this looks like it might be rust right here, fungal. Either that or it's a very early formation of one of their galls. And this is the actual fruit. It's got a couple seeds in there. I don't know if these are edible seeds or not. This thing is just a 
we call that buffet of things. Got some nice little cones, cone fungus things growing as well. He is not having a good time. Everything is just picking on him. These little white cone fungus. I don't know what they are. I'm just calling them cone fungus because they look like a cone. I don't know if they're actually... They're, I'd be very surprised if they were. It's got white stuff, yellow stuff, purple stuff. It's all kinds of stuff. Some orange and some purple. So this is an old one. That might be done. Trying to see if I could find the larva or the midge in there. This is a fresh one. Orange ones. I'm not seeing it. I like the roots. So there's cypress holding down that corner. There's a cypress holding down the corner over there as well. Far corner. It's crazy how low this water keeps going. When I was out here last. I don't know if he's alive still. Probably. This is all underwater. Yeah, it was about six, eight inches of water at that post. Dropped close to another foot since that pop up video. It's just a... I guess I would call it a gravel bar, but it's mostly snails, so it's like a snail bar. Snail shells. Sounds like a snail bar. Nice pretty purple clam. Purple inside. This is one of those 90 degree ones. I had the 93 right here, but a big one of them. They got these little breathing tubes that they have sticking out through that 90 degree section. They take the water in and blow the water out of. I'm not sure what kind they are. Good thing about this stuff further away from the shore is it's rockier. It's not just fresh mud. It's been eroded by the thing for a while. So you can actually walk on it half decently. Uh, so most things have a use and each area is different a like little micro environments so what do you call it like over at the campground mud flats you got a lot of clans right now that's 
spot that has the most clams. So fisherman wants to come off of that uh, boat boat ramp over by the bridge. Yeah, so I can't remember on flats is like best clamming spot so far, but still not a ton of clams. A lot of clams, you know, but not a ton. And hopefully find like a backwater bay that is just loaded with them where it's just like clam bay, you know. And that'll be the clamming spot, you know. Find a spot that's just loaded with beech trees, you know, that'll be the beach seed spot. That one really big uh, pawpaw patch would be all the pawpaws I would need. You know, it's just a single patch. Uh, that's a clam. I don't know why he's stuck out like that. Is he dead? Nope, he wasn't dead. He was just sticking himself out like that for some reason. snails. My size one. Yeah, but find the spots for the highest concentrations, you know, so that's kind of, it makes going to that spot worthwhile, you know, and it's a, a long hike or a new paddle. It's not really worth going to the spot. Uh, when, you know, for food gathering, when the poop hits the fan, nice little field of goodness. All the little cypress roots. Yeah, cypress trees. And the one trees are my favorites. Favorite to look at, you know, just the flaring trunk. Such a skinny thing, and it's... It's kind of a nice shape. Granted, I don't know of any use for a cypress. So it's kind of a useless tree. Whereas the beach has uh, edible leaves and nuts. So the beach is nice. Let's look at and it's got a function. Beach head. Let's see if I sink in. Some methanes going on. The damsel flies like it. Doing all kinds of little matings. It's October 1st and they're mating. It's kind of a. Are guys going to have enough time to do stuff? Beetles, 
baby seedlings starting to grow. Yeah, it's definitely nice going to the spot. Any spot, you know, like going to the pawpaw spot, going to the clam spot, recreational wise. But kind of the prerequisite uh, for going there recreationally is that you've got enough food to eat. You know, you're not dying from starvation. There's the train bridge right there with the turkey mud flats behind it. Poop lagoon all around. Uh, somewhere. Where is it? Oh, there it is. All around to the train bridge. Uh, that was a good hike. Uh, it was raining, so I didn't bother going up that side trail. It's like my backpack was just getting wet, and my keys outside the car. Yeah, you know, I don't put the keys. I don't bring my keys in with me, so I just set them down beside the car. Drive down to the base of the driveway, so I don't gotta walk up the driveway. This is, you know, a hassle. And by the time I get to the driveway, I'm tired. No point in walking up it. Uh, so once you got your food supply set up, then you can do recreationals. Beautiful. Rock out croppings. Got some sap going, sap streaks, but it's long dead, you know, it's been, been dead for a long time. Uh, so I want to go up there. <coughs> Glade ramp. See where that goes. It'll probably be a while before I get to that. What I want to do tomorrow is... What is that? Oh. Hog peanuts on my arm. Uh, tomorrow I wanna walk out to the islands. The islands that never were until man became. I could probably just walk uh, with my waders on pretty easily. Yeah, maybe waist deep water tops. As long as I follow the mud flats. The mud flats got particular roots connecting the islands. Stick to those roots and it should be pretty easy to walk to all of the uh, islands now that the uh, water's so low. It's like, now's the time to do it. Before the rains come and I get go, I get going on the uh, instructions again.
has these stream events that kind of dictate the uh, locations for things. It's like a, this may have been a uh, underwater for 20 years, you know, I may never have gotten this low, the water level. And like this would just be loaded with clams. Then a year like this year comes and kills off all the clams and things, you know. Pushes them out of the deeper waters. Well, you know, shallow waters. And you know, every year that the water stays over here and like they're come back, you know, so it keeps them further and further and getting denser and denser. Nice shaded overlook, you know, some big branches for them to sit on. In the shade, so they don't get cooked. these herons coming from. It's the fifth or sixth heron that was up in these trees that's just flown, flown out that I've scared out. And I've never seen five or six herons in such a tight spot. Great blue herons. There's the cypress holds down the fort. Keeps everything Protected. The winds and the waves hit it and break on it before they get to the other stuff. It's like this is man made or animal. Wild. Flat, you know, this is a few inches of water. Four inches going on six inches now. So gradual. Thing. We've got some cool water plants down in here. kind of trees these are. They're pretty awesome too. Out flares out. It's this massive base and it's just these two little dinky things going up. Sitting 
on this hard pack. Perforated clay. Some kind of trail. Bed of cypress roots or the anchor tree holding it down against all that. This is uh, the point where. Poop Lagoon ends right here. This is the end of the Poop Lagoons. Flies need to get down on that poop nest. They're like, oh, there's so much good poop nest. Buzzing from them. They're pretty cool flies. They do their thing down there at ground level. That one. They don't bother you. The blue one's pretty big. And it's the open, uh, open lake. With the island chain. That right there is a floating duck blind. It's like, why have it stationary when you can have it floating and just move it around? Last year, uh, they towed it down into Poop Lagoon. I guess the duck season, I don't know. I don't know when the duck season is. Yeah, so, this winter, I plan on getting a uh, BB gun. Not a, I got a BB gun already, but a pellet rifle. Uh, and not just any pellet rifle, but an actual good pellet rifle, 25 caliber. So it can actually do some damage and I can use it to put down a pig or put down a goat, you know, for butchering it. And maybe use it for hunting, you know, 25 caliber is uh, pretty substantial, I would think, you know. And uh, this one person has one. Got like a bicycle pump. You pre-charge press cylinder, press air cylinder with this bicycle pump. And then you can kind of set the pressure rating on it. So you can do super powerful shot or like 25 weaker shots, you know. This guy uses his for, I don't know, I guess probably squirrel hunting mostly or something. Squirrel and grouse and small game like that. And he usually has it set to where he gets 25 shots before he needs to repump it. 
you put down a medium game, like a woodchuck. It doesn't look like much. Found a fish between here and the island, but it's deep. There's no mud flat connecting it right here. You kind of see a mud flat that's exposed. Uh, so, can't cut across this way. Gotta go down to the campgrounds. And then, uh, cut across there. Actually making pretty good time. Look at two bars. Hmm. Spend a little more time on the journey then. See the accumulations of the stuffs. Decent uh, aquatic fossils, snail fossils, and things. There are chances of seeing one right out in the right out in the open. sticks out of the water is a big turn on for the dance flies. They just can't help but make when they see a rock stick out of the water. And a lot of clam shells around here. And snail shells on Poop Lagoon side of the bend. Look at a lot of snails, but now it seems like it's mostly clams. Probably, you never know. All 
I like the water grass. Seaweeds. It's crazy that there's not more seaweeds. It's like, why isn't there seaweed everywhere? It's, there's gotta be like really rich silt. I think it was just love growing in this stuff. Kind of like an old wishing well with all of these uh, clamshells. They're like coins. Bright green, oh, the island grasses. Yeah, tree. Not in the dark green of the distant. Maybe a kill deer flapping around. Very beautiful with the lighting like this. I'm in this position. Uh, I don't know if I ever said it. Wow, look at this. Something's been like this new tree or something. And I don't know if I ever said it, but those tracks, those funky tracks are new tree tracks. I mean, this is raccoon or something. Finding the clams from around in here, and then bringing them up here. Opened, opened, you know, opened, 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 opened. It's probably about 20, 30, probably about 30 clams right in here. Eaten relatively recently, you know, like uh, last month or two, last couple months, you know, this season. Yeah, you know, they're not years old. <clears throat> I guess maybe a person doing a clam bake.